uh, to make this presentation on bioprospection of microbial diversity from extreme environments. And the focus of this uh, presentation is on microbial diversity and their biotechnological applications uh, with particular reference to Indian Himalayan region. And this is important in view of the increasing recognition of mountain ecosystems and the associated biodiversity and their adaptations under the present climate change scenario. Through this presentation, I will share my experience and views on the microbial diversity of Indian Himalayan region, aiming to motivate the young researchers to take interest in this upcoming research area. Further, it is more relevant to us as the graphic era deemed to be university is located right in the foothills of Himalaya. So, uh, okay, journey of my life was through Himalaya, across the Himalaya. Right from my childhood, I wanted to live in high mountains. So that was my choice. After my doctorate, I was affiliated initially with CSIR Institute of Himalayan Bioresource Technology that is in Palampur, Himachal Pradesh. And from there, I moved to G.V. Panth National Institute of Himalayan Environment, Almora, that is in Uttarakhand. And the beauty of this institute is we have centers across the Himalaya. So I was traveling all the time through for my pro uh, projects. I was in Itanagar, I was in Sikkim, and Sikkim used to be my favorite. And I'm happy that presently I am with Graphic Hira, that is, again, I would say, in the foothills of Himalaya. Uh, in biodiversity, basically we refer to animal biodiversity, plant diversity, and microbial diversity. Among these three classes, microbial diversity remains somewhat neglected as the microorganisms are not visible in any environment like plants or animals. They are microscopic, they need magnification. Nevertheless, microorganisms are integral component of each and every ecosystem. Microorganisms are ubiquitous in nature because of their small size, they are easy dispersal, they are metabolically versatile and flexible. Microorganisms can utilize a very wide range of substrates as nutrient source. They possess the ability to survive and multiply in diverse habitats. For example, there are microorganisms which can grow in absence of oxygen. They colonize extreme environments where plants do not survive, where animals do not survive. These are some of the applications, the ecological applications and biotechnological applications of microorganisms. They contribute to the ecosystem services, for example, through nutrient cycling. They are important in medicine. We get maximum antibiotics from microorganisms. They are important in industry. For example, we have Baker's East industry from Saccharomyces. Microorganisms are important in agriculture. They can replace, the microbial fertilizers can replace the use or minimize the use of chemicals in the agricultural fields. Fermentation is a microbiological process. We have foods and beverages through fermentations and these days we are also getting a range of probiotics. Biotechnological tools are also there where microorganisms are used, for example, in genetic engineering. Micro organisms, or we refer as extremophilic microorganisms, they are various classes of these microorganisms on the various, on the basis of various extreme environments. In temperature extremes, we have thermophilic microorganisms, we have psychrophilic microorganisms. In saline environments, we have halophiles. Under high pressure, we have barophiles and on the basis of pH, we have acidophiles and alkaliphiles in the environment. Indian Himalayan region 
represents one of the 36 globally recognized biodiversity hotspots due to its unique and rich biodiversity. It represents great variation, particularly in respect of its topography, its geography, and its edaphic and climatic conditions. These variations in turn support a variety of habitats, including extreme environments. Indian Himalayan region or IHR extends to 11 states, nine fully Himalayan states and two partially Himalayan states. Among fully Himalayan states, we have alphabetically Arunachal Pradesh, Himachal Pradesh, Manipur, Meghalaya, Mizoram, Nagaland, Sikkim, Tripura, and Uttarakhand, while Assam and West Bengal are the partially Himalayan states. Now we also have two union territories, Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh. For bioprospection of microbial communities, we have three major components. Number one, the diversity, where we consider a range of microorganisms like bacteria, fungi, actinobacteria, the second one is the applications where we perform a lot of screenings for biomolecules such as production of antimicrobials, production of enzymes, production of pigments. And the third one is very, very important, that is preservation of these microorganisms. Usually we maintain a culture collection in our laboratories, but it's equally important to get accession of these cultures from national or international depository for that purpose, in India, we have MDCC, that is Microbial Type Culture Collection and Gene Bank in Imtech Chandigarh, and NCCS Pune, uh, that is National Center for Microbial Resources. Extremophiles are the microorganisms that thrive under extreme environments from geothermal areas to polar regions. In any climatic or geological event, Microorganisms are the least affected life forms or they are the best survivors and this happens because of their ability to produce enzymes under extreme conditions which are referred as extreme enzymes. Here this is the classification of microorganisms is based on temperature. On the basis of temperature, we have psychrophilic microorganisms, mesophilic microorganisms, thermophiles, hyperthermophiles, and temperature is one of the most important factors for determining the uh, diversity of microorganisms. Now, coming to the high temperature environments, from high temperature environments, we can isolate the thermophiles and for that, we have hot springs in Himalayan region. These two hot springs are in Garhwal Himalaya, that is district Chamoli, and this is uh, known as Tapovan. And here we have temperature as high as 95 degrees Celsius and 83 degrees Celsius. Many a times it's almost boiling. And these sites are devoid of carbon or many nutrients, so they are also referred as oligotrophic. These sites are also slightly alkaline in nature. From these hot springs, we get this kind of diversity. We have filamentous organisms. VBNC means they are viable but not culturable. We have huge diversity of these organisms in these sites, which can survive a temperature up to 100 degrees Celsius. Then we also have many species of bacillus, which are gram-positive bacteria. On the basis of morphology and phenotypic and genotypic characters, these microorganisms mainly belong to geobacillus, bacillus, and penibacillus. And these microorganisms at high temperature produce a range of enzymes like amylases and lipases, which are important for their survival and also have many industrial applications. Besides bacteria, we also have cyanobacteria or the blue-green algae in these hot springs. And we could isolate more than 37 species of these uh, algae from this size. These are ecologically 
important as they contribute in biological nitrogen fixation. Besides, they have biotechnological applications. They are important in biofuels and the pigments. In Himalayan region, we experience a variety of disturbances, like we have natural calamities such as landslides, etc. Then we have anthropogenic activities, and in these conditions, the role of microbial culture collections become very important. Another extreme is the low temperature environments, like we have psychrophilic microorganisms from these environments. These are basically cold desert areas, glaciers, the alpine regions in Himalaya. This is Pindari Glacier in Uttarakhand. This is a snow-clad Himalaya. Uh, and these, are our, these have been our sampling sites for isolation of psychrophilic microorganisms. Here we have a variety of bacillus, which are gram-positive bacteria. They are endospore-forming, and they survive these sites by virtue of this property. Besides, uh, bacillus species, we also have many cold tolerant pseudomonas psychrotolerant bacteria and they play important role in biodegradation, the ecological uh, phenomenon and they are important in plant growth and biocontrol. Actinobacteria is a class between bacteria and fungi and they are best known for production of antibiotics. We have diversity of streptomyces, nocardia, and rhodococcus. These are also important for production of lytic enzymes, which are important in industries like amylases, proteases, lipases, and chitinases. Then we have cold adapted fungi. We could isolate more than 35 species of penicillium and they were identified on the basis of their cell morphology and Genetic, uh, genotypic characters. Next to Penicillium, we have species of Aspergillus, Trichoderma, Penicillium, Pacillomyces, and Cladosporium. And these are all from one class that is Ascomycota. And the reason is these are known for elevated sporulation. And why virtue of this, uh, this, this property, these microorganisms survive under extremely low temperature areas. They grow with a very specific growth pattern in the petri dishes. They are important. This character is important in adaptation. And this is equally important in the industrial applications. We get a range of bioactive compounds from these organisms. Biodegradation is very important and we know it's a slow process due to low temperature in Himalayan region. It's carried out by Ascomycota, such as Aspergillus, Penicillium and Cladosporium. These organisms produce enzymes like lignin peroxidase, manganese peroxidase, and lacases. And the production of these enzymes is slow, but due to a low temperature, but it's there for the longer period. This is a very unique property of the extremophilic microorganisms. On the basis of pH, microorganisms usually are classified as acidophilic, neutrophilic, and alkalophilic, but these microorganisms can grow from extreme acidic to extreme alkaline pH. And this indicates that these microorganisms are likely to possess some hidden traits in their genome which are expressed under unfavorable or the extreme conditions. This was the first report from our laboratory. Then these microorganisms are important. They produce natural products. This is an example where this is penicillium species. It is producing uh, pigments. The important thing is they produce red color pigment at 14 degrees Celsius due to low temperature stress. At high temperature, this red color will be absent. Similarly, this is a bacteria which is Serratia marcescens. Again, we can see at 14 degrees Celsius, this red pigment is there. Uh, at high temperature, this pigment is absent, it is producing, and this is important in 
textiles, in food industries, and in medicine. Microorganisms also inhabit the inner tissues of plants and develop plant microbe associations. Here, the role of endophytes is very important in extreme conditions. In Himalayan region, we experience heavy rainfall, heavy snowfall, and these are some of the important species, like we have rhododendrons, we have quercus, we have abies, oak, pine, and all. In these plant microbe associations, they are important biotechnology for production of bioactive compounds, for production of enzymes. Ecologically, they are important as they contribute in phosphate solubilization, biological nitrogen fixation, and also some of these microorganisms can be considered as indicator of climate. The plant microbe associations are receiving attention due to their importance in global food security. There is a global preference for using the organic or environment-friendly products instead of chemicals. Chemical fertilizers are preferred as a source of nutrition, and this is mainly because of their ready availability, their easy handling, and their predictable yield. But at the same time, their harmful effects are also very well documented, such as they are not good for the overall ecology, they cause loss in the soil productivity, they also contaminate our water resources. In this background and on the basis of scientific knowledge, there is a strong case in favor of increasing the use of biological fertilizers. This is mainly for the plant nutrition and the biocontrol properties. In any ecosystem, it is done in a stepwise manner. For example, number one will be the isolation of native microorganisms, then screening for desirable traits, selection of efficient strains for field application, and production of inocula in suitable formulations. The key thing is, the key factor is, microorganisms are environment specific. For developing bioformulations, we always need native microorganisms. If, one, if we want to develop bioformulations for Himalayan region, we will have to go for cyclotolerant microorganisms. Then we can go for screening and field testing and all. In this background, the best candidate will be the endophytic microorganisms. The endophytic, this is the upcoming field in science, endophytic, endophytes are the microorganisms that inhabit inner tissues of higher plants, at least for one period of their life cycle, without causing any disease symptoms. And this is a symbiotic association where the plant provides nutrition as well as the shelter to the endophytic microorganisms. The microbial partner, in turn, produces a plethora of bioactive metabolites and contribu contributes to the plant growth and competitiveness in the stressed environment. This is an example of rhododendron. Rhododendron has got attention in as a indicator of, uh, uh, biological indicator of climate change due to its property of early flowering, we are also likely to have microbial indicators from these species. For example, if we see, like this is colonized by uh, mycorrhiza, but if we see in case of this picture E, here we have a very special kind of structure which is referred as dark septate endophytes and this is because of the melanin content in these microorganisms. This is high altitude wheat where we have these organisms when the crop remains under snow for one, more than one month. Here these are some tree species where we have colonization of these dark septate endophytes. These are Himalayan birch, we have pine, we have oak, we have taxes. This was an opinion paper like, can we consider these dark septate endophytes as bioindicators of climate in mountain ecosystem? And this is the clue for this hypothesis is, these are the organisms that start replacing mycorrhizae with increasing altitude in the mountains. 
This was a recent publication where we have 21 chapters on globally recognized extreme environments colonized by extremophilic microorganisms. This is the Great Himalayan National Park that was recognized as World Heritage Site for Biodiversity by UNESCO in 2014. And this site, or like we have many such sites in the Himalayan region, and these are totally unexplored for microbial diversity. So the message is, especially for the students, please come out from your laboratory for a while, visit these sites, and let's try to educate ourselves about this very unique biodiversity with some key questions, what they are contributing to the ecology, to the environment, what are their applications, ecological applications and biotechnological applications, what is the impact of global warming on this kind of microbial diversity, what will, be the, what will happen to this microbial diversity if the glaciers are melting, if the glaciers are receding, don't we have to conserve this microbial diversity for a better tomorrow and can we select some of these microorganisms as indicator of climate change? These are some of the questions for the new generation. Like in our laboratory here, we are now working on these aspects. I have a small research group over here in Graphic Era. And uh, I would say research is like a meditation. So it's always a great involvement. And thank you very much.